Hey. Oh, there it goes. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> we are going to just go ahead and record our presentation, or I guess our cop talk um, session for today, because it's a lot of really just kind of back to basics 101 information that I think is going to would be helpful for anybody who is you know starting this journey or midway through the journey, just to kind of um, I guess stop and get a, a, a better handle and a, and a fresh picture of you know, what your retirement living options are. Um, obviously, we're going to focus specifically on our market and our region and um, just kind of line out the, the different choices that you have available to you. And then we're going to dig into um, just some, some basic facts about Westminster Village that uh, a lot of people don't know. You know, even after 40 years here in the Wabash Valley area, there's a lot of, we find, um, that, uh, that there's some still some misinformation or um, out there and and some things about Westminster that folks just really didn't know and you know didn't understand how the business model works and stuff. So so anyway, welcome to our very our first for the 2022 um, Coffee Talk Money Matters Monday, and um, I kind of covered the the topics for today, uh, and then in future Mondays we're going to dig more into specific understanding the contracts and costs. Um, we're gonna also work through a real, like a, a, a live um, example um, of, a, of a tool that we have called, um, sorry, Decision Genie, uh, where we plug in a, a per, like a, we'll, we'll come up with like John and, and Jane Doe uh, and their financial picture as it is today. And then what would look, what their financial picture would look like as they choose to move into Westminster Village and go through different levels of care um, and experience those different costs and those levels of care. Um, and then where um, where are they at the end of life with their finances? We'll show you just real examples of that on the final Monday. So stick with us um, and every day we'll, we'll be just learning a little bit more. So there we go. Um, so when we're going to stop, start off with a, a poll, um, you know, obviously it's important for us to address the things that are important to you. Uh, and when asked, you know, what are some of your concerns about current lifestyle, um, seniors sh shared this, um, a heavy amount of folks are worried about, uh, health. That's a, a concern about, um, current lifestyle, I guess, to, you know, Maybe that next step that then is, you know, what happens when I have these health problems? What kind of, you know, care am I going, going to need? What's available to me? Um, home maintenance is another one. You know, I know I do. Many of us live in much older homes here in the Terre Haute area, which, um, of course, have all of their beautiful pluses, um, but also have some downfalls because they're older <laughs> and need some maintenance. And, um, you know, what is that? You know, what is that? You know, look like, you know, what's it going to cost you going forward, how to budget for that. Um, I think those are concerns that folks have and just finding somebody to do all the fix it, you know, take down those trees that need to come down and such. Um, losing independence was another concern. Uh, I think that's one of those common misconceptions that as you, you know, get older, your independence is taken away. But I think if you're position yourself right, then, you know, that's, that's not always, doesn't always have to be the case. Um, and staying active is another one. Um, you know, certainly we've learned by working in this industry for so long that you, know, you got to keep moving. Um, and so that's a, a concern for individuals, especially right now, my goodness, during the pandemic, what, when we're limited on things that we can do, what, you know, finding ways to, to remain physically active. Um, financial resources is another big one. I'm surprised that it kind of felt so low in the list because um, that, that usually is one of, the, we think, I guess, some people's top concern is, um, you know, can I afford to live at Westminster Village? Can I afford to move anywhere? Can I afford to, you know, bring in care when I need to? Um, and, and then, you know, driving, lack of companionship, um, ability to find suitable help are all other concerns that popped up as well. And we're gonna kind of through the different coffee talks on both Mondays and Fridays, work through some of these top concerns and how, and how we address those and meet those concerns here at Westminster Village. Um, but today we're really gonna start with um, really your, your, your options, you know, retirement living, like I said, 101. 
your options today are you know, stay in your current home. You can certainly do that. Um, you can live with your children. When, I, when we've done this presentation in a group before, usually when I mention live with your children, everybody in the group goes, oh no, <laughs> like, that's not, that is not something that most people want to do. Um, you know, you wanna give them their space and their privacy and you know, in some situations it works out, but overall we've learned that most people don't want to live with their adult children if they don't have to. Um, you can also obviously downsize to a smaller home or a condo. Um, there are new options in town for that with kind of single store, story homes that are being built, which is a great thing. Um, it's definitely a need here uh, in the Wabash Valley area. Um, you can hire home health care when you need. Um, so the, lots of home, home health agencies. There are some at the nurse level. There are some at just more of a CNA level of care uh, to bring somebody into your home. Um, you can choose to move to a retirement community. Um, so there are lots of choices in town, which we're gonna cover on that. Or you can choose more of a, a lifestyle community. Um, a lifestyle community is something like, um, like, a, like in Indianapolis, they have a Dell Web where it's a real like neighborhood of individual homes and 55 and older kind of a thing is what we consider a lifestyle community. So, um, but your senior living housing options or your retirement community options are kind of really broken out like this. You know, you've got your a retirement community, which was like more independent living, um, a life plan community, uh, or formerly known as a CCRC, which stands for continuing care retirement community, is one option here in this area. And that's like Westminster, what Westminster Village is. Then you have a, a rental communities. Living is that next level of care. Um, there are assisted living options in this area that are both licensed by the state of Indiana and, and um, have regular surveys by the health department. And there are some that are non-licensed. So uh, they kind of use that term assisted living, um, maybe offer an agency to provide services um, and provide that assistance, but they're not licensed by the state and follow those regulations. And then finally, you have um, that 24-hour nursing care level, which is what you consider a nursing home. Um, you know, we, we try to get away from that terminology. And in here at Westminster Village, it's called our health and rehab center, um, also referred to as long-term care, or again, 24-hour nursing care, um, when you truly need uh, that higher level of care, um, really on an ongoing basis. So in, as we dig into each one of those, um, again, like I said, nursing home has multiple different names. <laughs> and um, and uh, I think many, many people have a long-term care insurance policy, which might cover the cost of that. Um, that's something that we can help you to dig into and understand a little bit more. If you have a policy like that and you want to you know, have some questions about what it'll cover, we'd be happy to meet with you and help you figure that out. Um, but often um, folks are saying, out of pocket for nursing home care, um, or they've depleted their funds to a point where they can apply for Medicaid um, and have that the majority of that covered by um, the Medicaid option. Um, it is often you know, selected when there is no other choice. Um, it's a very difficult decision to make to move you know, to, to, to a nursing home care, but when you need it, you need it. Um, it's usually when you need, you know, when you're not able to really participate in, in, in your, your activities of daily living any longer. You need full assistance with dressing and, and showering and medication management and all of those things. Um, you need those nurses and aides around 24 hours a day to assist. Um, now in our health and rehab center here at Westminster Village and it really uh, all the other kind of nursing home level care across the, uh, the, the Terre Haute area, um, we are, there's a Medicare option. So that's the short term stay, you know, option. That's where you you maybe um, you know encountered a health incident, you know, or maybe a fracture or a, a setback with your health. Had a three-day qualifying hospital stay, three-night qualifying hospital stay, and then you can discharge to um, a health a rehab center um, under Medicare and have that paid for as you kind of do therapy and get stronger and get better, so you can get back to your previous uh, level or previous environment. Um, that's what Medicare will cover. Now, at a point when you need 
that level of care, that 24 hour nursing care on a permanent basis, then you're paying out of pocket for it for Medicaid um, application or long, your long-term care insurance is paying for it. Um, Medicare does not pay for you live in a nursing home permanently. Um, and then um, I think one of the challenges is just that access to quality care, you know, may be limited at a point when you need it. Um, you know, you know, right now with the, the challenges that the entire country is having with um, staffing and especially in the healthcare business, um, you know, we, we're at a, at a point where we can only take so many people in our health and rehab center. So we're kind of limited um, and we're not able to fill all of our beds. Um, so we kind of cut off our number of people that we can take um, so to be able to serve them with the staff that we have. So, and just so that you know, for your own notes, you're looking at, if you do need to do a private pay situation in long-term care, you're looking at at least 260 a day um, for that option. Then you've got your assisted living. So we're gonna work our way up and graduate up um, to, through, through levels of care. In assisted living, you've got apartments. Um, some of them, they might be small, they might be more of a studio, one room kind of apartments. Some of them, some assisted living communities, um, they do have, it's obviously a more residential feel than a nursing home because you can usually bring your own things in. Um, it's um, usually a, you know, a need driven kind of choice, you know, when you need, uh, some uh, help and support with medication management or maybe help and, and reminders for things or, um, you know, meal preparation and um, maybe a little bit of standby assist for, for showering or dressing. That's when assisted living is an appropriate level uh, of care. Um, we get a lot of calls for, from family members who say, well, you know, my mom need, or my dad need assisted living. And, you know, when we ask more questions, we find out that they really don't need assisted, you know, true assisted living. They can, um, they, you know, we can serve them really well in our independent living area because maybe they just need meal preparation. Well, you know, we've got that taken care of with our dining room, of course. Um, and the cost um, can be high, kind of depending on the level of care that you need. Um, some communities will have a, a base rate for the apartment and then levels of care based on the services then that you need above and beyond. Um, here at Westminster Village, we do an all-inclusive rate. So it's just one fee uh, and all the services that we provide are included in that. Um, but you're gonna be looking at about four to $6,000 a month um, for assisted living, um, no matter kind of what community you're in, uh, in this area. Um, every, the rates are really pretty competitive. We know when we do our market analysis each year. Um, again, like I mentioned before, there are licensed and there are non-licensed options. So that's a question you want to ask. And, um, you know, and, and making a move to a, an assisted living can be, um, can really, you know, help to, like I said, re reduce your stay in a health in the nursing home. You can, you know, get the care and support that you need there and stay safe and stay strong um, and avoid those incidents um, that lead to needing to stay in a, in a nursing home. Along the way, Rebecca, if I miss something that you think is important, do energy. Um, and then you have um, what we consider retirement communities or more independent living choices. So um, the, the purpose of our independent living option um, is just to kind of continue on your current life, or maybe even enhance and improve. Providing you more opportunities and, and choices and uh, amenities and um, um, just, I guess, uh, entertainment options and you know fitness options and things that will really help to improve and enhance your current lifestyle. Um, independent living is definitely more choice driven. Um, you, you make that decision at some point to to make a change and seek that out based on many different things. It might be based on health or, or mobility. It might be just based on, I'm tired of raking leaves. I'm one out of this house. I'm tired of the home maintenance. I want to do something different. Um, I'm lonely. That's what we're finding a lot here during the here at year two in this pandemic is folks are tired of being at home alone and restricted on what they can do. Um, so we're, we've received lots of inquiries from people based on socialization and that they're seeking that that socialization and 
um, and more activity in their lives, which is better for your brain too, it all trickles down. So um, in independent living, you might find, um, you know, it is more of a residential setting, you know, more full size kitchens and larger apartments, um, gets you on a single level, which is beneficial and safer. <laughs> um, amenities and services are certainly gonna differ from community to community. So you want to do your, you know, lots of research, lots of looking around and talking with um, residents who live in all the communities. They can, they're the, the, the best source, I think, of information sometimes. And then um, the long-term care benefits may vary as well. Um, some communities might have that next level of care and for you um, and um, allow you to kind of age in place and others may not. So here locally, um, you can kind of break it down into two different categories. You've got your rental type communities, um, which have a, you know, won't have an entry fee. Um, the leases might be a little bit higher. You know, the rate on the monthly fee might be a little bit higher. Nursing care um, sometimes is contracted out um, and might be limited. You know, the services available might be limited. Um, and the communities that offer, that are considered more of a rental type setting uh, are Sycamore Manor, Win Winmore. Um, Cobblestone is one, there's Harrison Crossing, there's Silver Birch, and Rebecca, I can't remember, what's the name that used to be Bethesda, now it's something else down on the south side. Um, it is the Commons of Honey Creek, Honey Creek. Okay, Commons. yes. And then there's also Shady Oak, mm -hmm. which is a 55 yeah. and older kind of lifestyle community versus a assisted living or independent, just more lifestyle. Yeah with no like, yeah, services, yes. And then while we'll, you know, we'll dig into this a little bit more when we, um, next Monday, when we talk about contracts and rates, um, Westminster Village does offer a rental option. So that's something to keep in mind. And again, like I, we'll, we'll share more on that. Um, so we do offer a rental option, but we also um, are primarily based in life plan um, and entry fee type product. Um, so there's an entrance fee um, under a life, typical life plan or CCRC community um, that's paid one time and then along with a monthly service fee. Um, they're in a, in a life plan community. The great benefits are, again, that continuum of care um, where there's nursing care on site, um, more of an age in place kind of concept with the services and resources we have available. Um, we offer a lifetime promise of care which is the main greatest benefit of doing um, that life, choosing the life plan option um, is that Westminster promises to care for you for the rest of your life. Uh, and that's again, something that we'll, we'll dig into and explain even more what, what that means and the value of that um, next Monday when we get together. Um, again, local example is us, Westminster Village. <laughs> okay, um, so here too, we wanted to hit some more facts about Westminster. Um, a lot of folks don't realize even after 40 years here um, in the Wabash Valley area that Westminster is a not-for-profit community. So we are, we're not, you know, we don't have any owners or shareholders who take, you know, it really is a not-for-profit community. We have a local board of directors who make the decisions about what go, what goes on here um, on a daily basis. We, um, we have been in, in the Valley for 40 years, celebrated in October officially uh, of the 2021, the 40th year. And um, our management company then, it, the board of directors hired Life Care Services to serve as management company. Um, so they run day-to-day -day operations. Uh, what that means is that they provide us with lots of, of resources and support and knowledge of the industry because they manage many communities across the country. Um, there are two uh, staff people that are here that are officially like life care services um, employees put in place at Westminster Village to run the ship, uh, and that's our executive director. Uh, right now we have our interim director, Stephen Still. Um, with many years of experience at the helm, and we have our administrator, her name is Paige Yance. Um, she is primarily responsible for the um, healthcare center and over the assisted living, so the, more, the licensed areas within the community. Um, another cool piece about you know, being a not-for-profit community is a high level of engagement with our residents. 
Uh, the residents actually form their own association, um, meet monthly, have um, an executive board that meets, um, various committees uh, to engage in, such as um, like a dining services committee. We have a marketing committee uh, of residents who are interested in helping us sell the community. Um, there is a committee that runs the library. Uh, there is one that takes care of uh, memorial service being done on a quarterly basis. And um, just um, really a, a good group of you know, highly engaged individuals who want the communities to succeed. Um, and it's neat to have such a strong, that our residents have such a strong voice, you know, in, in saying what's, what goes on here. Um, I wanted to also quickly new share, so, um, wanted to share with you on, on our website, on the About Us page, um, we've got some cool testimonial videos for you to look at. Can you see my Web, the website, Rebecca? Yes, I can. And Kate, I thought it might be um, fun to share a little bit, tidbit about Life Care Services too, about the JD Power Award and sure. how we've been, or Life Care Services has been in the running for that for three years um, for customer service in senior living. And in those three years that they've been eligible for the award, they have won the award. So I think that's really fun to mention. And reward, I guess it's more rewarding for us because it kind of, showcases the work that we all put in um, right. that life care services instilled in us, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they survey uh, residents living in um, senior living communities and life plan communities. And based on that, their scores and satisfaction, yeah, the life care services managed communities have, have won out three years in a row, which is, yeah, it's, we, we definitely share in that award and we post it up all over. <laughs> um, so I, I mentioned to our board of directors, so I wanted to share with you who those individuals are uh, on our webpage as you kind of scroll down and see our key leadership um, board of directors shows up here. And, and currently Sally Whitehurst is the, serves as the president of our board. Um, you know, Sally is known for her role at, at uh, First Financial Bank, um, although I caught wind that she might be retiring from there soon. I don't know if anybody else knows that, but um, <laughs> and Dan Callahan uh, is, is um, with Old National. Um, in the trust department there. Uh, he's been on our board for many years. Uh, Fred Ruby, actually, it, obviously a board veteran, he is, is stepping off the board um, here. I think that his this next meeting in January will be, might be his last meeting and opening up a space for someone new as Mr. And Ruby and his wife are gonna, are make, making plans to move into Westminster Village when we can get a villa open for them. And um, other members, Beth Tevlin's been a member of our board for many years. Of course, Beth is with the Wabash Valley Foundation. Um, Dave Friedrich is um, maybe three, two to three years into the, his board role on our board now. He is a local attorney. Uh, Eric Southerd is on our board of directors. Eric is a nurse practitioner, um, works at Union, but also is an educator at ISU. So he teaches um, nursing students there in the nurse practitioner program. Um, and Bob Basler, everybody knows Bob. Um, Bob is about maybe three, I think, three years now on our board um, and brings lots of great business experience, obviously, and marketing uh, knowledge as well. So that's, that's our, our board of directors there. I wanted to make sure I shared that with you all. Um, and I'm gonna switch back and share to our slideshow. You can see that okay? <clears throat> all right. Um, okay, so let's skip ahead. And then here's another um, fact and little picture, I guess, of the residential options at Westminster Village. Um, independent living actually is the biggest portion of our, um, where we sit right at about 200 independent living residences. So that includes our villas of which we have 32 and um, homes in the main building. So six of the seven floors contain independent living residences of various sizes. Um, and then the fifth floor of our building is the licensed assisted living area. So the entire fifth floor, um, 38 apartments there. Um, you'll also find two nurses station, two stations, two dining rooms, two activity spaces up um, on the fifth floor. Uh, so that's for our residents who you just need that level of care, uh, reside in apartments of various sizes there as well. 
Uh, and then our health and rehab center has 78 beds total. And um, again, Medicare and Medicaid certified. So we, we take care of and serve people who are doing a short term, you know, temporary rehab stay, trying to get better and, and back home and others that live with us long-term um, or full-time in the health and rehab center. And I think that might be my last slide as far as facts about Westminster Village. Um, I wanna, at this time too, we'll, we'll kind of open up for questions just about you know, senior living options in general. And I want you to know that in the coming Mondays, uh, we're gonna dig into very specifically our contract or what we call residency agreement, what the options are here at Westminster Village with the entry fee option, the life plan option, and our leasing option, and what do those look like? What are the differences in the, the agreement that you sign um, and that we, the promise we make to you? Um, we'll talk uh, specifically about the rates, um, the services that we offer here at Westminster Village. So what's the, what's the value and what are you getting exactly for your dollars? And then finally, um, like I mentioned, we'll go through a, a real financial plan and show you a picture of um, how we'll, we'll do one with a couple, uh, a financial scenario of what happens with their finances when they move into Westminster Village. And we'll do one maybe with a widowed or single individual um, and show you over time what that looks like, which I think is a really helpful tool. Um, we can also send you a worksheet so that um, you'll be able to, to um, run through that um, planning tool with us if you'd like to uh, and look at where what, what you, your your picture is and how thing, your finances will um, play out over time and should you need to, to make a move um, into assisted living or ever need long-term care in the future. Um, but yes, let's 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 answer questions and, and anything that you feel like on the, the basic mm, retirement living options and 101 that I might have missed or like so what I would like to do is I'm going to promote everyone to panelists so that you can turn your camera on um, and we can just chat, um, just open. Um, so if you're up to that, um, please do, please turn on your camera. I do have you guys all set up or I do have it all allowed here. You should all be able to then turn on your cameras and your microphone and we can chat through any questions that you have or Anything like that? Hello, Eileen. We can also, if you want to, we could stop the recording part. I don't know if people don't want to be recorded, you know, on their, their questions and stuff. We can 